my name is Demeter and welcome back to another session for concept design for architects and designers with Blender. So in this session we'll explore more advanced topics with, with objects. So we'll move this object out of the way. We'll add a new object, cone. Let's add another object, aquasphere. And another object, torus. Perhaps by this point you may have noticed that all the objects that we add, they snap to what it seems like this point here, which is the origin at the moment. So what they actually snap to is this cursor. So if we right click, we can move this cursor around. So let's put it there and now add another object, cube. And we can see that the origin point of the object, which is this orange dot here, has snapped to the cursor. Now let's explore the origin points a little bit more. If we go to this item here, we see that the origin point, actually for any of the objects, is always in the middle. So if we go back to the, to to the torus? Cone. If we go back to the cone, if we go to edit mode, everything is selected, we just move it up slightly, we go back to object mode, and we reset the location, that the origin point is the one that's actually being edited, and the mesh data is always related to it. So why is this important? Let's say I edit this object. If I go to view, let me just erase all the other objects first. X, delete. If I go to view front, and if I go to edit mode, in here we can change the display from solid to wireframe. And if I hit A, I deselect everything. And if I hit B, it does border select. So I select all these vertices and I hit X. And I want to erase just these vertices to delete. And I go back to object mode. We can see that we, we erased half of the cone. So let's just show it as solid. So now we have a modifier which is called mirror. If we go to modifiers, mirror. So now if we edit one side, it will edit both sides. So now, why is the origin? point important for this. The mirror, the modifier, that respects object space. So it respects where the origin point is in relationship to the actual mesh data. So if we go back to edit mode, we select everything by clicking A to deselect the couple of selected items first and then A again to select everything. And we slightly move it away we can see that the mirror is no longer connected. And that's because the mirror axis is exactly at the origin point. Now, what if we actually want to move the origin point to, let's say, this edge right there? If you go back to edit mode, we select this vertex, we go to mesh, snap and we say cursor to select it it moves this cursor that we had floating around and we'll put it anywhere I want to, once again if we go to mesh snap cursor to select it and it puts this cursor exactly at that point so if I go back and exit out now we can see that the cursor still stays there. So now if we want to move the origin point, if 
we go to mesh transform origin to 3d cursor and it just moved the origin point exactly at that point which makes these once again connected so that's very useful for sometimes doing things that we want to be exactly aligned at a specific plane for example the ground plane so once we have done whatever we have done to a specific object and we want to pull it back to the ground or any other plane we can just go in here and now if we type exactly zero now we know that this all of this edge here if we go to view front is exactly at zero so it's also very useful with these points with the cursor to actually precisely place items as well so if we go back to edit mode and let's say we select this vertex here actually it's that one because that part is mirrored and once again we go to mesh snap cursor to select it and we go back into object mode and now if we add another object plane cube it has its the origin point is exactly at that cursor point so that's one important factor for the cursor another one is let's just edit this object a little bit if we select the face shift select this so we can both scale and move together if we just scale this slightly and I will also rotate it along the x-axis by 25 degrees okay and I will add a loop cut with control R maybe I'll put it right there so now we have this element here that we can either move in this direction but what if we wanted to I'll just undo this move it exactly along this line so if we go to face we see that the manipulator at the moment is aligned to the world to the global axis however here where it says global we align it to normal it changed to the normals of the face so we can move it up this way and that way so that's quite useful but what if we want to move just this edge with that edge the normals are facing this way so it doesn't quite work but what we can do instead is select all the vertices and as you can see they move into that direction now if we scale it they both scale but once again we just want to scale these two so what we can do is select these two vertices go to mesh snap cursor to select it now if we try to scale all of these again the manipulator is exactly in the middle but we can change the manipulator to be exactly at the cursor so this icon here pivot center for rotating and scaling allows us to change this so we'll just select 3d cursor and now if we scale we can see that this line stays exactly where it is and this second line rotates or rather moves around exactly along that normal we can do the same with these two vertices we just have to have all of them selected in order for the manipulator to work along the normal of this face and move it again we're scaling everything but the only reason that these two vertices are not scaling is because the, the origin point for the scale transformation is exactly along them so it does not affect them so that's another very important feature for cursor for utilizing the cursor okay that's it for this tutorial 
Thank you, and we'll see you next time.